Hi everyone, Hermano here and welcome again to the channel. In today's video I'm installing Arch Linux on my laptop with LVM and a swap file. So I already downloaded the ISO and burned it to my USB stick and I booted up my laptop and now connected to SSH so that I can have a bigger terminal here. And I do have an Ethernet cable plugged in, so I have already an, an Ethernet connection. If you don't and if you have Wi-Fi, you would type in right now Wi-Fi dash menu. And when you hit enter, you'll get a list of Wi-Fi's around you. You can select yours, enter the password and you'll have internet. So I don't need to do this, so I'll cancel this command and let's start with the installation. So the first thing I want to do, since I have internet now, is to synchronize the time with internet. So I'll type in time, date, ctl, set, dash, ntp, true, and hit enter. Now I'll type in lsblk, and as you can see, I have one disk here called SDA, which is 512 gigabytes. And I want to actually create three partitions on this disk. I want to have an EFI partition. I want to have a boot partition and the third partition is going to be our LVM partition with two sub partitions, a root partition and a home partition. So let's begin partitioning by typing in fdisk slash dev slash sta and hit enter. Now I need to create a GPT label so I'll type in G and hit enter and that's done. Now I need to create the first partition so I'll type in N for new and hit enter. Partition number one default is OK, so I'll hit enter. I'll accept the default for the first sector, so I'll hit enter here. And I want this partition to be 400 megabytes, so I'll type in here plus 400 capital M and hit enter. Now let's create the second partition by typing in N for new. Partition number two is fine, so I'll hit enter. I accept the default for the first sector, so I'll hit enter here. And I want this partition particularly to be 500 megabytes, so I'll type in plus 500 capital M and hit enter. And now let's create the last partition by typing in N for new. Accepting the default partition number three is fine, so I hit enter. First sector is also OK, so I hit enter. And for the last sector, I accept the default because I want this partition to be the remainder of the disk, so I'll just hit enter. And there you go. Now I need to tell the system that the third partition is an LVM. So I'll type in T for type and hit enter. And the partition is the third one, so the default is OK, so I'll hit enter. And partition type for the LVM is 31, so I'll type in 31 and hit enter. And there you go. Now I need to write the changes to the disk, so I'll type in W and hit enter. And the partition are written to the disk. So I hit now Control L to clean up the terminal. And now let's begin formatting those partitions. So let me pull in again LSPLK so that we have them in front of us. So let's format first SDA1. This is going to be our EFI partition. So I'll type in mkfs.fat. This has to be a FAT partition because it's a EFI. By the way, my laptop is a UAFI system. Then dash capital F32 slash dev slash SDA1 and hit enter. Now let's format also the SDA2 partition, which is going to be our boot partition. So we'll type in mkfs.ext4 and the partition name is slash dev slash SDA2 and hit enter. OK, now we have SDA3, which is going to be our LVM. So creating an LVM consists of three steps. We need to create first a physical volume, then a volume group and then the logical volumes. So let's begin by creating the physical volume by typing in PV create and then the partition name. So in my case, slash dev slash STA3 and hit enter. Next step is to create a volume group. So we'll type in VG create and I'm going to call my group V group zero. You can call it anything you want. And then again, the partition name. So slash dev slash sta3 and hit enter. Now it's time to create the logical volume. So I want to create two of those. I want to create one for the root user and one for the home directory. So let's begin with the root user and we'll type in lv create dash capital L and then the size. So for the root in this case, I'm going to type in 35 GB. So I want to give the root 35 gigabytes. Then we'll put in the name of the group. So in this case, v group zero in my case. And then dash n, because we want to give the name to this partition. So 
This partition is going to be called LV root. You can choose your own name here and then hit enter. And we create now the home partition by typing in LV create again, dash capital L. And in this case, I'm going to use 400 gigabytes. I'm going to keep some empty space for snapshots. And then again, the name of the group. So in my case, V group zero dash N. And then again, the name of the partition. So in my case, LV home and hit enter. Now I'll clean up the terminal. So we need to load now the modules in the system. So we'll type in mod probe dm underscore mod and hit enter. And now let's scan the system to see our volume. So we'll type in VG scan. As you can see, found volume group V group zero. And now we can activate it by typing in VG change dash A for activate and Y to accept the change and then hit enter. And there you go. So now we can format the root and the home partition. So let's begin with the root partition. Let's type in then mkfs.ext4. Now slash dev slash the group name, in my case vgroup0, and then the partition name, in my case lv root, and hit enter. There you go. Now that we've formatted this partition, we need to mount it. And we are going to mount the root partition into the mount directory where our file system is going to be installed. So we'll type in mount slash dev slash the group name vgroup0 slash lv root. And we're going to mount it under space slash mount and hit enter. Now we created the file system, so let's mount also the EFI and boot partition. But before we do that, we need to create those directories. So let's begin first with the boot directory. So we'll create that directory by typing in mkdir slash mount slash boot and hit enter. And now we can mount the boot partition to the boot directory. So we'll type in mount slash dev slash sta2. If you remember before, sta2 is our boot partition space mount space boot and hit enter. We'll do the same for the EFI directory. Again, we need to create that directory. So we'll type in mkdir slash mount slash boot slash EFI and hit enter. And now we can mount SDA1 here. So we'll type in mount slash dev slash SDA1 space slash mount slash boot slash EFI and hit enter. There you go. Now we need to still format the home partition. So let's do that. So we'll type in mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash the volume v group zero in my case slash lv home. That's the name of the partition and hit enter. There you go. And now I clean up the terminal. Now we need to mount this partition under the home directory, which does not exist yet. So we'll create that first. So let's type in mkdir slash mount slash home and hit enter. And now we can mount the home partition to the home directories by typing in mount slash dev slash the volume v group zero in my case slash lv home and space. We're going to mount it under slash mount slash home and hit enter. Now, before we generate the FS tab file, let's create the Etsy directory. So we'll type in mkdir slash mnt slash etsy and hit enter and now we can create the fstab file by typing in gen fstab dash capital u that mount we append this to mount slash etsy slash fstab and hit enter now if we output the content on fstab we'll see what's in there so let's do this by typing in cat slash mount slash etsy slash fs tab and hit enter and as you can see we have our root partition the first one the boot partition the efi partition and the home partition so everything looks good we can clean up the terminal now we can install the base system so we'll type in packstrap and we'll install this in the mount directory so slash mnt and the packages are base linux linux dash firmware and I want to install also an editor which uh, I will need later so I'll type in nano this is the editor I want to use and I'll install also LVM2 another package needed for LVM and hit enter 
Now it's going to take a moment to download and install everything, so I'll be back when it's done. So the base system is installed, so let me clean up the terminal. So now we can enter the installation by exiting the installer, and we do this by typing in arch dash root and slash mnt, and hit enter. As you can see, the command prompt changed. So now we have to take care of a few things here. So the first thing we're going to do is to set the time zone. So I'll type in ln dash sf slash user slash share slash zone info slash Europe slash Zurich. You will have to change this accordingly. And we're going to link this to Etsy and local time and hit enter. Now we can synchronize the hardware clock to the system clock. So we'll type in HW clock space dash dash sys to HC and hit enter. And now we can work on the locales. So first we need to edit the locale.gen file. So we'll type in nano slash etsy slash locale.gen and hit enter. And you want to scroll down with the down arrow here until you find the locale you chose. In my case, it's English US. So I should be this one here where it says UTF-8. And I just uncomment this line. And then hit Control O and enter to save the file and Control X to exit the editor. Now we can generate the locales by typing in locale-gen and hit enter. Now we need to edit also the locale.conf file. So we'll type in nano etsy locale.conf and hit enter and we'll input the strings here lang all capital letter equal en underscore us dot utf dash eight and then control o and enter to save the file and control x to exit the terminal now we need to create the host name so to do that we'll type in nano slash etsy slash hostname and hit enter and I'll name my machine Arch LVM. Then again, Control O and enter to save the file and Control X to exit the editor. Now we can also edit the hosts file. So we'll type in nano slash etsy slash hosts and hit enter. Scroll down to the empty space and enter the strings 127.0.0.1 tab localhost. The next line colon colon one tab tab localhost again. And the next line, 127.0.1.1, tap the host name, so in my case, archlvm, dot local domain, tap, and then again, the host name, in my case, archlvm. Change these according to what you chose before. Then again, control O and exit to save the file and control X to exit the editor. Now, because we are using LVM, we need to edit one file, which is the mk init cpio conf. So let's do this by typing in nano etsy mk init cpio dot conf and hit enter. And we need to scroll down here to the hooks section until we find the hooks line. And here enter between block and file system one space and then type in LVM2. Make sure there is a space after that. And then again, control O and enter to save the file and control X to exit the editor. And now we need to generate the image file. So to do that, we'll type in mk init cpio dash p space Linux and hit enter. It's gonna take a moment to generate the image. And there you go. Now let me clean up the terminal. Now we need to make the swap file. So to do that, we'll type in f allocate dash l, and then the size, in my case, two gigabytes, and then the name slash swap file, and hit enter. Now we need to create the swap by typing in mk swap slash swap file. And as you can see, we need actually to change the permissions here. So to do that, we'll type in chmod 600 slash swap file and hit enter and now we need to activate the swap so we'll type in swap on slash swap file and hit enter now we need to add the swap file to the fs tab file so we'll need to call that up so let's type in nano slash etsy slash fs tab scroll down to the empty space 
and enter then these lines slash swap file space none space swap space sw space zero space zero and then again control o and enter to save the file and control x to exit the editor now let's mount also the swap file by typing in mount a and there you go now let's create a password for the root user by typing in passwd and hit enter and the new password and now we need to install some extra packages so to do that we'll type in pacman dash s grub our bootloader then we have efi boot mgr which is needed for grub and then some networking packages so we have network manager we have network dash manager dash applet we have wireless underscore tools we have wpa underscore supplicant then dialog and also os dash prober and we have m tools we have dos fs tools and then two development packages one is base dash devil and linux dash headers then when you're ready we'll just hit enter accept the default here and accept the defaults by hitting enter now it's going to take a moment to install so i'll be back when it's done so the installation is done so i clean up the terminal now let's install grub by typing in grub dash install space dash dash target equal x86 underscore 64 dash efi space dash dash efi dash directory equal our boot directory which is slash boot slash efi space dash dash boot loader dash id equal grub and then hit enter no error reported and now we need to generate the configuration file so we'll type in grub dash mk config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub cfg and hit enter and there you go now i need to exit the installation and return to the installer so i'll type in exit and hit enter and now let's unmount the partitions by typing in u mount dash a and hit enter we get some errors here but that's fine so now we need to reboot the system and if everything went well we'll reboot into the login prompt in arch linux so i'm gonna do that and i'll see you in a moment so here we go the installation was successful i could see the bootloader and now i entered with the root user here and now we need to proceed to activate the internet and we'll do this by typing in system ctl start network manager with capital n and capital m and hit enter now i will have an ip because i have an internet cable attached if you have wi-fi right now you will have to type in nmtui and hit enter and you'll see a list of networks you can select yours enter the password and you will have internet as well now we need to enable network manager so that the next time is automatically started and we'll do this by typing in system ctl enable network manager always with capital n and capital m and hit enter so there you go this is the installation of arch linux with lvm from here on you can actually add a new user and install the desktop environment by first installing the graphic cards drivers the display server the display manager and then the desktop environment of your choice but for this video that's it i hope you enjoyed it and if you want to see more make sure you like it by clicking the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of future videos subscriptions really helps us out guys and if there's anything specific you want me to cover or you have any question please let me know in the comments below thanks for watching and see you in the next one